Hi everyone and welcome to a chat about the oldish. With me I have the creator of the oldish, Karen Brown. Hey Karen, can you tell me first off how did you what was what was the inspiration behind the oldish? I worked with products um, basically for aging seniors for nearly 20 years now and I've been deeply involved in fall and injury prevention for about 17 of those years. In talking with our customers who are usually the families of the aging seniors, it became clear that there were a lot of frustrations that had nothing to do with the products mm -hmm. we were dealing with. It's just the overwhelming nature of dealing with somebody who's aging. It's the first time for them. And even if mom was the first one to develop some, some issues and some complications, when dad develops those issues, it's something new again. He's a different individual. So again, it was the first time for them. And there was really no one place to go for people to get all kinds of information ranging from retirement all the way through caregiving, long-term care, and death. So over the years, this idea has, has developed and eventually came to fruition about three years ago. So we developed a website called theoldish.com, and uh, there are well over a thousand articles there, some really amazing mm -hmm. tools that have been provided to us that, that I didn't develop. I can't claim credit for these. They were developed by Dr. Vicki Scott, who is an expert in fallen injury prevention. Um, she's on the West Coast and she had developed some tools around home safety and exercise for people who are aging. And she's very kindly given those to us. We developed a medication checklist, which is so important. We'll talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit later. But this site has just grown and grown and grown. And we now have a Facebook page. We publish on the Apple News app. Companies are coming to us asking if their material on aging seniors can be published on our site. And of course, we're happy to have different voices. And you know when you're onto something when everyone's coming to you and asking, can we be a part of this? Can we be a part of this? And what sure. I love about the oldish is your whole commonality, the theme of this is about proactive aging. Absolutely, proactive aging and advocacy. Advocacy is very important um, for people who are on their own. You know, it used to be that when somebody got older and left their home, they would move into long-term care. Well, they're not building any more long-term care facilities these days. And essentially, the responsibility has been downloaded to communities and families. Mm -hmm. And to make your voice heard and to get things done, you really need to be an advocate. But to be an advocate, you need information. So we attempt to provide that information and help people advocate for themselves or for the loved one that they're caregiving. And that you make it bring up a really great point, and, and I even noticed this, that they're not building more long-term care centers, but there are a lot more uh, health facilities that I see being built, but no place to stay. No place to stay, um, and for people who don't drive anymore, or maybe your adult children work all day long, it, how do you get there? How do you get from your home? to these centers. Social isolation is a really, really big problem with seniors, and especially here in Canada, where we have winters that we're famous for. It's very difficult for people to get out of their homes and feel safe and confident in doing so. Mm -hmm. um, for people who live in rural areas, it's even more difficult. Transportation is a huge, huge issue. And you know what, you touch on, where do you get your article ideas? Because every time I go on to the oldest just to see what is what you are writing and speaking about, you, I like the point too about even isolation. There was a, I don't know if you would have seen it, a YouTube video was done where a gentleman took a week and he, because it was, did you see that I video? did see that. Yeah, and where yep. he just put himself in a complete isolation because this does happen with many seniors as they enter past retirement and family isn't around as often as they used to be. So where do you come up with those inspirations? Gosh, there's all kinds of it. There are articles and journal reports and conversations with friends. Sometimes it's just my own experience. I don't write for the oldish very often, but I did write one the other day about juicing because I realized how bad my diet is. I, I live by myself. I'm in my 60s. And cooking for myself is not thrilling. Those of you out there who cook for yourselves, it's not a laugh a minute. So juicing is something that may solve the problem for me to get the extra vitamins and nutrients that I need. So I wrote an article about it because it's my experience of aging. So there's inspiration everywhere, really. Well, and that's what I love about the oldish is it truly is a community. So if you, okay, what, what age would you recommend that the oldish is for? You know, there are, 
adult children who start caregiving for their parents in their 40s. So as soon as you start dealing with people who are older, if you're not dealing with somebody who's older, then as soon as you start looking toward retirement, that's when you should start reading the oldish because there are articles there about retirement. We had um, a lawyer write articles for us about the, the different um, powers of attorney that you need to have put in place as you age. And you need to do this while you are still in good mind to be able to sign the, the documents. So all of those kinds of preparations are really important. Um, you know, as parents start to age, we all need to have conversations with them about when it's time to give up the car keys. What do you want done with all the contents of your home? And these, these are not easy discussions. They're very, no. very difficult. So we try to provide a bit of guidance give you some tools to, to help people to talk to, links to other articles, all of that kind of stuff. So when should you start? As soon as you start feeling older or looking after somebody who is getting older. And as you said, advocacy, so important. It's, it's yes. like the first step, really. It is the very first step, is to prepare yourself to be an advocate for yourself or for your aging loved one, uh, because your voice needs to be heard. The, the population of people who are aging is increasing every single day. And it's not going backwards. And it's not we're, going, we're, it's we're getting not going older. backwards. We're getting, yeah. We may all think we're 30, but we're not. Yeah. And no, it's not going backward. You're right. So you need to be prepared to advocate and, you know, work that muscle so that your voice is heard. And, you know, the squeaky wheel, mm -hmm. it gets the grease. And you need to be the person who provides that grease for yourself or for someone else. Well, and we look at this. Our society, we have more boomers, more aging population. Uh, anywhere I'm reading about, you hear about the gray tsunami. And, like, we're, we're not prepared for this. And no. this is one of the reasons why I also, again, I love the oldish. Because there is, I don't think there is enough material out there. And you are one of the very few locations that you can go and you can get tangible, hands-on tools, tactical tools that, that are so useful and so helpful, whether you are the caregiver or you are aging aging in place and aging at home, you know? That's so, right. okay, let's talk a little bit about polypharmacy. Polypharmacy, um, so the older definition of polypharmacy was that it you are in a state of polypharmacy if you take four or more medications per day. The newer definition of it is that if you take more medications than are clinically indicated, you are in a state of polypharmacy. So th there's a, a slight difference there. I mean, you could clinically need six medications to deal with your health issues, and that would be okay in, according, in accordance with the new terminology. Um, but what people don't understand is that medications also mean the vitamins you may take in the morning, that stomach antacid that you may need to take, herbal teas that you may drink, Mm, Anything okay. you put in your mouth that is a medication, if you have a cold, a cold medication, all of this stuff interacts with your, your prescribed medications that your doctor may give you. And it can cause some really bad reactions. Um, falls. Falls is a really big problem and usually it leads back to polypharmacy. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I mean, it can be okay. it can be in the house too. It, yeah, and things you trip yeah, over, you can yeah. trip over the dog and the cat. But medications uh, and their thought. their interactions sure lightheadedness, huge cause dizziness, of, all huge of the cause different of things. falls. Uh, Absolutely, and that's been an area of your specialty your entire career, practically, right? With I'm I'm really interested in in yeah. falls and injury prevention. Yeah, I've got a deep interest in that. And so we developed a, a medication checklist, which is available on the oldish. Um, and that was developed in consultation with an ER doctor, who said. I wish every one of my patients came into the ER with this list. Wow. So because it's online, you need a membership to the Oldish, which is free, but we need to put you behind a firewall because it's personal information. Okay, so that make that makes yeah. sense. So it's it's absolutely it's free and you're not going to sell their information anywhere, no. you're not doing any of that. But as Karen said, it, it's personal information, so you, you yeah, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. So in a quiet time, you get out all your medications that have been prescribed, and you write down the name of it, how much you take, how often you take it, your doctor's name, your, your allergies, um, the over-the-counter medications and remedies that you take on, on a fairly regular basis, and it lives on our website. We can't see it, don't worry. We can't see it, but you can print it out, you can email it to your doctor. You should actually print out two Amazing. copies of it. Yeah. One to take to every doctor's visit and review your medications mm -hmm. with your doctor every single time. And if a new one is added, you need to understand how that is going to impact the ones that you're already taking. The other copy you should um, tape onto your medicine cabinet door. The reason for this came from my ER doctor who, who helped on this. I had no idea. When EMS comes to your house, 
Oh. After they get you stabilized, the first thing they do is get a garbage bag and empty out your medications into From your bag cabinet. and take it to the ER because they don't know what you're taking. Mm -hmm. This medication checklist is there. They will know what you're taking, how often you're taking it, who your next of kin is, who your doctor is, who your pharmacist Gee. is. They will know it all. So it is an incredibly valuable tool. It's free. It's free. You should Could get you it. imagine, like, not only the time saver, but when it's when it, when it's a matter of life and death, and you've got it right there in front of you, and you know, and it's so simple to do. And it you said so it simple. lives online. Would you recommend taking it to? I guess your doctor would already have this. You wouldn't need to take it to your pharmacist too, because you're picking, absolutely. I guess you would take it to you the would. pharmacist. Yeah, you take it sure. Then, yeah, because you're like, picking up something that might have come from somewhere else, and and right. then they'll at least know because they're the ones doing the, the mixing for you and yeah. And again, it goes back to the point of advocacy. This is your second mm. check to make sure everything's okay. And it's not to fault the doctors. The number of articles and journal pieces that come out every single day, the doctors cannot possibly stay on top of all of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like a double check. You check with your doctor, you check with your pharmacist, and then you know that this medication is not only gonna do the job it's intended to do, but it's gonna be safe. Well, and again, let's face it, like if you have a doctor for this and you've gone to a specialist for this and not everyone is speaking to everyone. And like you said, I mean, we wish everyone could, but there's only 24 hours in a day. But that is the that is an amazing tip to put that in your medicine cabinet and print that out. And how is easy is that? So if you for yourself or if you're looking after and caring for a loved one, number one thing I would take away today for number that. one thing. And you can do multiple lists. You can do one for your mom, one for your dad, one for your aunt, you, one for yourself. You, you can do multiple lists. You just call them a different name and they save that way. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, we're talking polypharmacy. Polypharmacy. Yes. Drugs. Okay. Yes, which in this day and age is very important because and mix mixing this and that with everything you just you, yeah super super important. It the is. other thing I want to talk about, and I'm really passionate about this because I love construction and building, is about aging in place. Right. right. Yeah, and you have some really fascinating articles on right now. I was what was I reading? I was reading home design with seniors in mind. I was reading this article uh, yesterday, and I thought. I love it because it's things that you don't necessarily think about in your 30s and then you start thinking about them in your 40s and then oh you really start thinking about them as you start to get older 50s 60s you know but some of them seem common like common sense but then then why didn't I think of that I know right I know yeah. it's really important as we age to make sure that if we want to stay in our home where we've you know had our our marriage or our partnerships and raised our children m many people want to stay there but it has to be safe for you yes yeah. so many people for instance live in two-story houses and if you can't manage stairs anymore we need to understand if you're able to revamp the house so that you can live on one floor we need to make sure the doors are wide enough for a wheelchair that there are no throw rugs um, you know, there are just so many components to keeping people safe so that they can successfully age in place. And when forgetfulness becomes an issue, there are other tools that are necessary for that. So that people who may lose sense of time, who may forget to take their medications, who may forget to take a bath, who may forget to eat or leave the pot boiling on the stove, th there are new technologies and new devices, uh, new apps, new thoughts coming out every single day to keep people safer. It's not happening nearly fast enough, but it's happening. And again, advocacy, you've got to advocate for yourself and understand that you are getting older and that even though you may think in your mind you're 30, I do, <laughs> that you're not. And you've got to just watch all of these things to and put them in place yourself because as soon as something happens, it may be that catastrophic thing that you wish would never happen and you may never get to go back to your own home again. I know that happened with my grandmother. She was sleeping on the couch. Somebody rang the doorbell. Her leg was asleep. She got up to go and answer the door. Her leg was asleep. It gave out under her massive fractures. And when she went to the hospital, she never went home to this place where mm -hmm. she had lived since the day she was married. That's which changes you, horrible. which completely changes you completely, as a person, right? Completely yeah. changes yeah. you. So, you know, if, if you're not able to revamp your house, then you have to look for some other place to live that will meet your needs. And there are a lot of really interesting designs coming out now. Um, everything from tiny houses in the back of your children's yeah, yes, property I, yes. to groups of tiny houses. This was a really interesting one that a, a friend of mine in California mentioned. Tiny houses that are built, four of them back to back with all of the I've seen this have yes. you yes. all of the services in the middle and actually the houses are constructed of peat peat that's made from cannabis plants 
some kind of concrete that's made from that. Really, really interesting. So it's it's not only economical, but it's green, and it's a great place for people to live. Because all the services are in the center. The houses all face out for privacy, but they're tiny. And many of the tiny houses are being built with um, all kinds of technology now so that people know when you open the refrigerator, they know when you take your medications on time. If there's a slip or a fall, they know when that happens because this technology tells them. So, you know, concepts are moving toward these ideal living situations. It's just really getting municipal and county bylaws to catch up to allow them and then for people to buy into them. I think you have so many interesting tools on the oldish and this fascinates me to no end about aging in place because there's again there's so many things that I had never thought of until I started th actually thinking about it seeing my parents my parents are currently building a house as well and it's that's what it's all about it's about aging in place and making sure all of those steps have been taken now I think you're gonna have your own tech show with all, <laughs> Maybe. Well, the oldest should have its own tech show Maybe. with all the new technology coming out and all of these new tools that you said you know there there are so many neat things that on on your phones and and programs and courses right. that you can oh my gosh so i think i think the oldest is gonna have its own like tech show we can do this together <laughs> exactly we should do like a tech we should a tech talk talk next time yeah oh my goodness yeah so what are some of your favorites that that you've seen that maybe that you i'm not saying you necessarily need, but maybe you've implemented or are thinking about implementing well i i think just going back to the oldish for a second dr scott has provided us with a great tool that that is a favorite of mine and it's a home safety checklist uh, it was on paper but with her permission, my web team was able to make it digital. So on your smartphone, you can go through room by room. Oh, you can carry it with you, perfect. And answer yeah. the questions. It's either, it's yes or no. That's all it is, okay, yes or good. no. No trick questions, no, no trick, trick questions. questions. It's either yes, yes or no. no. And then you submit it, and it tells you how to turn the no's into yeses. Oh, so brilliant. that's a really okay. great tool. That, and it, it goes room by room and outside of the house as well. For those of you who don't like the techie piece and like more of a visual piece, there are videos that do the same thing. There's an occupational therapist who walks people through different rooms of a house and the outdoors as well and talks about the things that you need to do to make it safe. So, you know, it's, it's all about keeping that home safe. Um, for people to live in and age in place successfully because the option is not really something that most people want. Most people do want to age in place mm -hmm. in their own home. Well, and it, it's probably too, it, it's even cost effective when you think about it, obviously, because right. you probably got your mortgage paid off. You've, and, this, and this is where you grew up and where you spent your time. And, and at the end of the day, it's where all your memories were made. So to right. remove yourself from that is... I've been there myself with family members. You know, it's not an easy task. It's not. It's really not, it's not fun. There's an article that um, my writer. I have a writer who's who's really good. She pumps out six articles a week, and she found this really neat program, which I'm so impressed by. And I've sent it on to um, one of the uh, fire captains in my town, actually. And it's a program that is being experimented with in the U.S. for people who are aging in place, but who may need assistance, EMS assistance. And if somebody's on the ground because they've fallen or because they've passed out, how does EMS get in the house without breaking down a door? Well, they don't. So they've come up with this plan where they have a key in a lockbox, much like what real estate uses, yes, yeah. and they attach that around the side of the house so that it's not obvious that there's a senior who may need help, maybe to where the gas meter is red, for instance. Mm -hmm. And only EMS has access to that key. So it's, it's not a code that they uh, would give to the homeowner or their adult child or their neighbor. It's only EMS. So that if EMS needs to go to the house and they've got one of these lock boxes, they retrieve the key, they open the door, nothing is destroyed. They you do don't what need they a have new to lock, do. a new door, a new this, a new that, and everything. That's right. when you come home and all the headaches that right. will emerge from that And afterwards. once it's been used once, they put a new key or a new code in the uh, lock box. Brilliant. So it's safe. I just think that is an absolutely brilliant, low-tech mm -hmm. design that makes use of a technology that we've been using for decades for real estate agents, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. now we can use it to keep people safe in their own homes. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it as much as I love the oldish. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add about the oldish? We mentioned that ideally you should have a membership for it. it it's it's you know, to, but you can read three articles. You can read three articles before the site will prompt you to get a membership. 
the membership, as I say, is free, but it's because of things like the, um, the medicine checklist and the home safety checklist where you're writing your name and your personal information. You don't need other people seeing that. But once you've got a membership, you can also start building libraries of stories that are of interest to you. You know, you might be on your way somewhere and see a story pop up in your feed and think, oh, I want to read that later. So you can add it to your library to read later. Brilliant. Or okay. maybe it's a situation that you're dealing right with right now with some aging seniors that you look after. You can add that to your library so that it's there for handy reference or to email on to somebody else. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, so the things we've covered today, Karen, we've been talking about advocacy, polypharmacy, aging in place. Bottom line is the oldish is all about proactive, uh, proactive aging. That's right. Yeah. And That's right. Uh, it just continues to grow and blossom. So many people have been giving you rave reviews and every day I think you have more and more people coming to you asking to be a part of the oldish. Yes. Yes. So if someone's looking and wants to uh, not only visit your site, but maybe it has material or something that says, oh, I would like to contribute, how can they do that? There's a contact form on the website, actually, that you can email us at. Um, there's also a place for advertisers who may want to advertise, but I'll caution you, we don't take anyone. We, we only will take advertisers who produce products or services that we think have integrity and we want to show to our readers. So um, yeah, yeah, just the, the contact form on the Oldish is the great place. So it's like the Oldish is pick, top picks. Right, yeah. right. And we have a retail partner um, as well called Brown Healthcare. And there, every time we review a product on the Oldish positively, we put an Oldish approved sticker on that on product. The product. Right, in the site so that you'll know. I love it. Thank yeah. you, Karen. This has been such a pleasure. And if you haven't been to the site, visit it, theoldish.com. You'll be so glad that you did.